Hi, this is your host Sapin Bharti and today we have with us Yuval Bakhar, Open19 Project Fellow at the Linux Foundation. Yuval, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be on the show. Thank you for having me. What is Open19 Project all about? Open19 Project is about creating a, a new way of sharing hardware technology. It's an open source environment for uh, everybody who wants to participate in the environment of developing hardware commonly and creating a common form factor, but at the same time, enabling commercial value. So adding members into our project, which do have a commercial interest. And as a result, we don't limit them to create commercial value into their product by defining the framework, but not defining the actual hardware itself. We live in a software-driven, cloud-centric world. All we talk about is software, software, software. So can you talk about the importance of discussions around bare metal and hardware? Because the fact is, no matter how much we like to talk about function as a service or serverless, there is a server running somewhere. I think the bottom line for us to, uh, to look at this is that every application, every aspect of our life is running on a server. It might be a server which is running multiple virtual machines. It might be a server which is which is running uh, containers, but it's still a server. And uh, that server required to actually be at the top-notch quality, top-notch uh, availability and performance. And that's where bare metal comes in. Bare metal comes in when actually defining the capabilities of the server and the capability to run a, vir a virtual machine properly or running it purely on a bare metal. Bare metal solution today are actually a part of a significant part of what we're doing today in machine learning, in AI, where we're not running virtual, we're running on bare metal, and we're showing different aspects of the future of applications that are going to be dominating the market in the future. So bare metal is super important, even though a lot of the software engineers don't, don't really care where their application is running but it is critical for the advancement of the industry to be able to have a creative way to create bare metal, especially in a community way like we did with Open19. One more thing that I want to talk to you about is the kind of growth or uh, adoption of edge computing. And it could be both, either you look at the end devices, which is IoT devices, or we are looking at edge data center. Uh, and as we do look at, especially you mentioned AI, ML, and all those workloads, uh, it first of all poses a lot of challenges on its own. Latency is a big challenge, you know, uh, compliance can be a big challenge. So do you think that with the emergence of Edge, developers will actually have to start caring about Edge because now there is no virtualization happening there. You have physical Edge devices where you're deploying your, uh, your software. How will Edge change the equation? Yeah, so when you look at Edge, Edge has two parts for it. One is the aspect of how do you collect the data, uh, ship the data in uh, from cars, from cameras, from phone, from any aspects you connect to the network. And the other aspect is how do you start processing it? Uh, Edge is offering something very, very unique and new in the industry, and that's very high, low latency, very high bandwidth, specifically associated with 5G. And, and then we need to look at the definition of what is Edge Cloud. Edge Cloud is a traditional cloud uh, that you see in the public cloud, but it's very, very close to the endpoint. It's a cloud service which enables you to operate in very high bandwidth, low latency, and serve applications that we don't have today. So the edge is growing very fast. It's going to run virtual machines or run bare metal as long as you can maintain high bandwidth and low latency. The applications that will need the edge cloud are the applications that just can't backhaul their data into cloud. And edge cloud will be very distributed. It's going to be a cloud solution that will be associated with endpoints in a localization uh, matter. So it means urban areas will be sliced into sub-blocks, so maybe 10 cell towers every one of them or 20 cell towers every one of them, and they will serve those 20 with a very strong backbone connectivity between those blocks of Edge Cloud. That solution is actually a solution which is emerging right now and it's going to be dominating the market in the next five to 10 years because of the fact that more and more applications will be written and will be requiring the bandwidth that we need to be able to process. Today, one of the biggest bottlenecks of cloud is actually bringing the data in and pushing the data out. 
Edge Cloud is solving this problem completely and enabling applications like VR gaming or remote medicine that we can do today with cloud services. So if we go back to uh, Open 19 project, are you going to cater or look at all these use cases or you're looking is only and only at data center servers? Open 19, the way it's defined, is actually defining a form factor, network connectivity and power distribution. It does not jump into what's in the server which plugged into the Open 19, but it does address a lot of the requirements that we have, both in the data center as well as in the edge. It's actually the most simplistic way and operational, uh, operational free to actually be able to install Open 19 and actually plug in server. Open 19 was designed originally that the UPS guy who delivers the servers can actually plug it in and run it. And as a result, we created an extremely simplistic way. There's no cabling in Open 19. There's nothing that needs to be done beyond the initial installation, which is being done when the data center is built at first. So it's highly applicable to edge locations where you're going to have less uh, manpower to actually run them. And the manpower that you're going to have running them probably going to be has lower qualification compared to large data center operators. So that's why uh, Open 19 is highly addressing, highly addressable to this market because of the simplicity and the availability of it. When you look at Open 19 into large data centers, it's absolutely still very valid technology for that because of two main reasons. First, it's actually reducing the cost of the overall solution that you are purchasing because of the architecture is being built with centralized power and centralized network. But at the same time, it actually creates a process which is simplistic in installation and, uh, and uh, maintenance of servers up to the point that you can have in large data centers, robotic hands that will actually remove and insert servers because there's no, there's no cabling involved in it it's much, much easier to implement a full dark data center with no people in it if you have Open19 installed. You're talking about, you know, the, the kind of origin of uh, Open19. So I also want to quickly understand uh, how the project got started. And then I would also like to know why you decided to host the project at the Linux Foundation. Yeah. So the, the project initially started with LinkedIn. LinkedIn decided to actually try and optimize our footprint LinkedIn is, is, was running and still running off bare metal, and we were trying to optimize our operational build out of our data center. Uh, in the process to do that, we uh, got to the point that we said, okay, you know what? This is a technology that can be applicable for a lot of other companies. And since our compute aspect was not a competitive advantage for LinkedIn, LinkedIn's competitive advantage is the platform of LinkedIn.com. We decided to actually open it up and we started a foundation, which was the uh, Open19 Foundation, to actually create a different kind of uh, hardware sharing platform for communities that were uh, uh, wanted to get involved. Uh, at the peak of this, we were actually running at 28 companies which were involved in the Open19 Foundation. The Open19 Foundation decided to, to join the Linux Foundation because of the aspect of creating a solution into a much larger community, which is the Linux Foundation community, and enabling us to participate in hardware projects in the Linux Foundation, which is Open19 is the first, but at the same time, start integrating software projects from the Linux Foundation into the Open19 platform and create, create a much more elaborative solution that will give us the ability to drive solutions into the market, which are going to be more comprehensive. Open19 originally, to be able to participate in Open19 as an end user, you needed to have some level of capabilities in-house for software management, etc. And with the integration to, to the Linux Foundation, we have an option to create a solution which is very comprehensive and would enable companies which don't have those resources to still be able to use the Open19 platform as their platform of choice. As part of the Linux Foundation, uh, what is going to be, I mean, of course, you have a very well-defined, you know, what is the objective of the project, but what will be your goal and mission as a LF-hosted project? Our goal with LF is, is to create a wide community and a wide community of contributors and end users. LF as a, as a platform gives us the ability 
to create uh, alliances and create uh, collaborations within companies that usually will compete with each other. But at the LF level, they actually collaborate on different projects. And that is probably one of the biggest values that we bring into the Open19 platform by having all of those companies collaborate and try to create a first target. With Open19, we did do this in the past. We show the first platform which ran an HPE, a Supermicro, Inspur, a servers running on the same chassis. But the Linux Foundation is taking us to the next level on around that and enables us to integrate different software packages from different competitors to be able to create a, a solution across the board. Can you talk about what is the structure of the project? What does the governance look like? What kind of help and assistance you are getting from the foundation? Yeah, so right now the, the Open19 portion project within the Linux Foundation is being run by a, a steering committee, which is a, comprised from the four top leaders of this project. That steering committee is actually spinning, spinning out right now working groups which are going to work towards version 2 of the Open19 Foundation and the enhancement on version 1 of the Open19 project. That combination will bring us to a level where it's actually highly integrated. The next level for us is actually integrating other sub-projects into the, the, the Open19 projects, which are going to be mostly around software. Now, the Linux Foundation is giving us the full coverage from perspective of everything that we do, which is not technical or everything which is not requiring us to work on uh, directly, like marketing, uh, backend, uh, and every every other aspect, program management, every other aspect that we need in the data in the sorry in the building the project itself. Uh, I think the Linux Foundation is giving us a slew of hosting, which is much makes our life much much easier and let us focus on the actual implementation and not on the uh, logistics around it. The project just got started. Uh, so it's kind of not fair to ask anything about long term, especially in this burn, we cannot. But if I ask, you know, hey, what does your pipeline, what are your plans, what are your roadmap look like, what are the things that you want to execute as the project, you know, grows and matures within the Linux Foundation? The first step for us is, is version two of the Open19 uh, project. The version two of the Open19 project is going to enhance the original Open19 project, which has been created five and a half years ago, is going to enhance all aspects of the Open19 project and enable us to go into the future and future-proof us. That's in the short run, which is the next six to 12 months of our work is going to focus on that. The, the longer term, like I indicated before, is actually integration of software packages into the Open19 uh, projects and enabling completely self-sustained project that will create for people the way to deploy data center without worrying about the requiring very heavy uh, engineering work on their side. If somebody is interested in joining the project, how somebody can get involved? So it's very simple. You just go to open19.org. You're going to go to the membership tab. And in the membership tab, you'll be able to see if you can join it, if you want to join as an individual, if you want to join as a corporate, and there are multiple easy paths through the open19.org membership tab to show how to do that. And uh, we will connect, as soon as you click on, on join, we will contact you immediately and be able to actually make a smooth integration into the Linux Foundation as well as the Open19 project. Yeah, well, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only Open19 project, but also talk about uh, the whole landscape, the importance of discussions around hardware. And as you said, this is, I, uh, if I'm not wrong, the first or the only hardware-related project at the Linux Foundation. So good luck with that. And I would love to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much.